All right, before getting into this admittedly bizarre topic, a bit of background is needed. Now, I love horror movies and would guess that you do too if you're watching this video. When I was in the third grade, my dad showed me some classic terror films, such as The Exorcist and The Blair Witch Project, which, which looking back on it was questionable parenting choice, but uh, whatever. It, it led to me becoming somewhat immune to most scary movies. Certainly not all of them, and, and one that did freak me out was The Fourth Kind. I don't know if you've seen it or not. I've shown it to some who agree that it's scary, others who don't. That's just how humans work, but I think a main reason why it freaked me out is because it used supposed real footage next to dramatizations. Now, I was a literal child and a fucking dumbass when I watched this movie for the first time, so I believe the whole thing was real, which it obviously is not. Uh, anyway, the whole reason why I brought this up is not for the movie itself, but for the location the events in the film take place in, a tiny Alaskan town called Nome. Now again, the movie is a total work of fiction, but there are some real life happenings in Gnome that have been going on for decades. Primarily, a largely disproportionate amount of Gnome citizens simply vanish. This is what inspired the movie, The Fourth Kind, to even be created. And while the movie suggests aliens are the cause, which would be sick, but I'm getting ahead of myself here, the, the true cause is still a mystery. So what I'm going to do here is try to convince you that people are disappearing from Gnome at an alarming rate. There's been multiple cases in 2020 alone. We'll look at some chilling case studies and finally wrap up with some possible causes of the disappearances. So let's just get into it. Before I started to seriously research this topic, I wanted to see if there actually is a phenomena causing people to disappear in Gnome. So I found a list of all the missing people cases. According to Alaska's Missing Persons Clearinghouse, 33 people have gone missing in Nome since 1990. Now, your initial thought is probably 33, you know, only 33, but you have to keep in mind that there are less than 4,000 people that live there. Less than 4,000. This number is pointless without any perspective. So I did some basic crude calculations, not to be taken as concrete numbers, but it does show a trend that far too many people are disappearing in Nome. So what I did, first I added up all the missing persons reports in America as a whole since 1990, which was somehow about 24 million fucking people. But then I found that about 92% of these missing people were found within the first year, whether that's dead or alive. So that brings the truly missing, aka people who actually disappeared, down to around 1.9 million. With that number, I was able to find the odds that you or me will disappear and never be seen again. I then compared that to Gnome. What I found is that since 1990, 21 people should have gone missing in Gnome when compared to the rest of the country, but 33 did which is 58% higher. Now to say that again, you are 58% more likely to vanish by simply living in a particular Alaskan town. To put that in perspective here, I mean, if America's homicide rate was 58% higher, then we would have similar homicide rates as shithole countries like Iraq and Nigeria. And furthermore, due to some environmental factors I'll get into in a bit, Anyone who goes missing in Nome should be found without much effort. Again, dead or alive, but most of them are just vanishing. This is not a secret either. Uh, the Nome citizens themselves were actually so scared about what was happening that the FBI traveled to Nome to investigate. Now, I'll get into the details later in the video, but since we're going to be talking about this town so much, let's take a peek at what it actually looks like. The fourth kind shows stunning images of what is supposedly Gnome, but this is not reality. The largest attraction in Gnome is this. Take that however you want. But Gnome could be your dream town if you are an isolationist. This doesn't necessarily add to the mystery, however it does make it more interesting. Uh, if we go over here on Google Earth, you can see how far north it, uh, this town actually is and how tiny it is. This is the whole town. It's basically a damn village. Like, here is the airstrip, and here are the docks for the ferries. These are the only ways to get back to greater society. However, there are over 300 miles of road that branch out from Nome, but they all 
terminate or I guess just fade into nothingness. There are three main roads, which I'll just quickly show you here. This one ends at another tiny town called Bre Brevik, Brevik, Brevik. The second one is much longer and has a couple buildings along the route, but ultimately ends in what I can only assume to be a serial killer's hut. I mean, just look at this thing. What, what is this? Finally, the last main road out of Gnome is the longest of the three, and similar to the last one, it ends at some small, sketchy building in which the owner has probably participated in multiple war crimes. Okay, why does this matter at all? Well, if there is something nefarious going on in Gnome, the fact that it is so isolated from the rest of the world would allow these actions to kind of fly under the radar. But before theories, let's look at some of the real life missing person cases that I found to be most interesting, mysterious, or generally just fucking weird. Alright, one of the more recent and unexplained cases, Florence, uh, oh gee, Florence Ocpo, Ocpo, I, you know, she went by Flo, so I'm going to be referring to her as that going forward. Flo was a loving, respected, and liked woman in her community. She was 33 years old, worked to provide for her daughter, she had no enemies, and lived close to her parents. A very normal life for a gnome citizen. And just over six months ago, she was seen in a tent along the shore of Gnome. Now, I assume she was camping. Camping is very common in small town. Hell, I went camping all the time in a mountain town with over three times the population of Gnome. Yeah, okay, I say camping, but it was more like drinking, tripping, and trying to bang underclassmen, you know what I mean? <laughs> Alright, sorry, I should probably be taking this more seriously. Anyway, okay, Flo lived a normal life and was seen in a tent September 1st, 2020. The next day, she was gone. So, her parents reported her missing. I mean, that doesn't really make sense though, right? I mean, if she was seen the night before her disappearance, she was not deep in the woods, she wasn't in some remote meadow, she was really close to town. Also, her tent was undisturbed and, kind of creepily, her jacket and shoes were left in the tent. But we'll get back to that in a minute. Bottom line, she is missing. So let's find her. So, since her disappearance, the Gnome Police Department has conducted 100 interviews, which might not seem like a lot, but by that ratio, if a single person went missing in New York City, the New York Police Department would have to interview over 700,000 people. But let's keep going here. Thousands of man hours of searching have been conducted. The search effort has used multiple helicopters, airplanes, and even a special submarine robot to try and find Flo. When these strategies yielded no clues, a large volunteer force, the Alaskan State Rangers, the Civil Air Patrol, the FBI, and the fucking U.S. Coast Guard were all assembled to find any clue of what happened to Flo. They used trained search and rescue dogs, fixed wing aircraft, helicopters, and patrol vessels to scour every inch of the land. Also, they looked for clues on every CCTV camera even remotely close to the tent. They found nothing. This is not some cold case from 50 years ago. This happened in 2020. And here's the real kicker. There's seemingly no way that a search party this large and extensive could not only have found her by now, but this search party has yet to even find a clue. Not even a footprint. That look at Gnome again. She was on the coast when she disappeared, right? But close enough to town that someone could positively identify her. So let me ask you, how far could you identify someone without question? As in what they're wearing, what they're doing, facial features, 50 feet, 100 feet, 200 feet, you know, whatever. Let's say you have the eyes of God himself and can make this out from half a mile. We're also assuming that you are the individual that happens to own the property on the absolute edge of town. Again, this assumes that you can point out someone's facial features from almost three football fields away, which is retarded, but let's go with it. Now, this is the absolute maximum distance she could ever be from town while still being identified. We also know that she was on the beach. So let's look at the route she could have taken, whether that's against her will or not. 
Now, on this side of town, the only roads in the area circle the airport, which is surely lined with surveillance cameras, none of which saw flow in a car or on foot, so we can largely rule this out. On the other side of town, which is where I personally believe she's most likely at the night of her disappearance, there are two routes a vehicle could have taken. The first goes back through the town, which would have been picked up on camera. Alternatively, she could have gone the other way, which would have also been picked up on surveillance by this business right here. As you may have guessed, she was not seen on any camera the night she disappeared. There's actually only one vehicle that drove by the area the entire night, and the driver came in and was cleared by the police almost immediately. From what I gathered, it sounded like he was returning from work. So we're looking at two main possibilities here. First is that she walked out of her tent by her own will, but based on the fact that she left her shoes and jacket, which are the most important things to bring in an Alaskan town. The only reason why I could, how I could see her doing this is if she was on drugs, but that was not reported by anybody. Second, she's either picked up or kidnapped against her will, well within earshot and eyesight of town, and then proceeded to vanish. You know, it doesn't really make sense. If this was an isolated case, sure, but there are 33 of them. And in addition, the geography of the surroundings of Gnome, it adds to the mystery. Uh, like I kind of referenced to earlier, the movie The Fourth Time, it, it suggests that Gnome is in a dense forest which would conceal bodies and evidence relatively easily. However, this is not the case. Gnome is actually in a massive clearing, a, a, like a, a meadow. It, it's almost like a wet desert, if that makes sense. I mean, there's nothing around it. There's hardly even hills. This is what makes the cases of missing people in Gnome stand out to me. I, I don't see anyone else talking about it, but how could someone go missing in this? In a fashion where the FBI and Coast Guard cannot even find a footprint. And it's not just one person either, it's 58% more people than the rest of the United States. And there are 33 of these cases. We look at another one here, uh, equally confusing of a case. Michael Palmer, just 15 years old at the time, is riding his bike with, with three of his friends. They're coming back to town from a party that went well into the morning. Everything is normal, but Michael starts to lag behind. In the moment, his friends actually thought that Michael was ahead of them because Michael was reportedly clear of mind and acting like himself, as in he wasn't under the influence. But his friend's decision to ride ahead proved to be fatal because Michael, he was gone, never seen again. A search party later found his shoes, which is a weird coincidence from the last case. Uh, they found his bike and other items near a river. There are plenty of rivers and creeks around Nome, and the specific one is not specified that I could find. However, every one of them go out to the ocean. Luckily enough, items washed out from these streams often get washed back onto a known part of the beach down from the city. So you'd think that something would wash up, but nothing did. Now, this is another case where an aerial and ground search was conducted and yielded nothing. So, with this knowledge, the most logical option, due to the fact that no signs of his body or distress were found on land, is that Michael separated from his friends on purpose because he did not call out to them. He then decided to go for a swim at 4 in the morning in a freezing Alaskan river. He then drowned, washed out to sea far enough and fast enough that his body did not wash back onto shore. Now, while definitely not impossible, I, similar to Flo, this resolution is inelegant. But that is the seemingly most viable solution. That a 15-year-old boy was drinking, tried to go home before his parents woke up, yet he made the choice to separate from his friends, take off his shoes, jump into a river, and then fucking drown. I mean, I don't know. It, does, it doesn't seem right to me. You know what I mean? I, I understand that alcohol makes people do stupid things. Believe me, I'm experienced. But even at my most blitzed, I would never decide to jump in a freezing Alaskan river by myself with my parents waiting for my arrival at home. Now, you may say that everyone reacts differently to alcohol. Sure, but okay, let's say Michael actually did consume enough hooch to raise Jack Daniels from the grave. In that state of mind, could he keep up with his friends for miles on his bike? Nah, he, he wouldn't even be able to walk. The whole thing is just 
bizarre, you know, and we'll get into theories in a minute, but uh, there, there's a couple cases that I found that are even more strange than the two I just talked about. Okay, quick disclaimer before I get into these harrowing cases. That's a really weird heart, harrowing, harrowing, heart, heart. When I was doing this research, I thought the happenings in Nome were weird, but there were many cases that happened when it was snowing. Even though bodies and especially evidence are still easily found in snow, I saw the explanation in the back of my head telling me, oh, okay, this guy froze, his body was buried, and somehow decomposed before the snow melted. Even though snow preserves bodies, but whatever. So I want to add a quick note here that none of the cases I talked about or will talk about happened when there was any bad weather at all. These cases actually happened in the summertime. The night of Flo's disappearance was like 60 degrees or something. So as I'm talking about these next two cases, just keep in mind that the weather was clear, it was warm, and they were not far from town. All right, Joseph Balderas, who was 36 at the time, disappeared under mysterious circumstances while fishing. And shit, this one is a, this one's a fucking doozy, let me say. He was said to be an experienced outdoorsy type who commonly went fishing, hunting, running, hiking, and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, go, actually going outside, which I would know nothing about. And he was fit, he was in shape, and he had plenty of experience going into the wilderness. On top of this, he was smart and safe when going on his adventures. And he was also a hard and reliable worker, was known to keep to himself, as he was doing on this particular fishing outing where he went alone. His truck was seen along the Nome Council Highway on Sunday, June 26, 2016. The following Monday, he was declared missing when he didn't show up to work. So his search went out. They found his truck quickly as multiple people saw both Joseph and his truck over the weekend. Like many of the other cases, the search started immediately with many airplanes, helicopters, volunteers, train dogs, and professional search agencies that also went on the last multiple months, but nothing was found. No clue of what happened to him would ever be discovered. Now, it is easy to chalk these cases up to getting lost in the woods or attacked by an animal, which is very common for those who go missing in the wild, but all of those scenarios leave a lot of evidence. If an animal attacked, there would be a large area of disturbed land, items left behind, and obviously either blood or bones. Okay, now let's say he got lost. Well, the cases of people getting lost in the woods and never being found almost always leave a clue. A backpack, clothes, footprint, some form of marker calling for help that can be found years later. However, in this case, the search started the next day, so footprints would be easily identifiable and dogs could find a scent quickly. And Joseph, he was very experienced. Under normal circumstances, he wouldn't just walk away from his truck and survival gear, and even if he was somehow teleported into the woods, he would have had made an attempt to hunker down, build a fire, and not freeze. You know, this is common knowledge. Any human would do this and therefore plenty of clues would be found. But Joseph somehow managed to leave absolutely zero trace of fucking anything. And here's a freaky part that I could not find an explanation for anywhere online. When the dogs were brought to the scene, they immediately identified Joseph's scent by the truck, but it didn't go anywhere. It's not that the dogs lost the scent, the scent didn't go anywhere. It was just around the truck. It's almost like Joseph just ceased to exist and just yeets to an ultimate dimension like I, I don't take my word for it investigators jurors and joseph's family have all acknowledged the mystery here about a year later jurors found reason to agree unanimously on presumptive death but in the court hearing they added quote they were unsure how his death occurred this echoed throughout many close to the case some suggesting that criminal activity was imperative for the lack of clues to make any sense. Selena Hargis, Joseph's sister and witness in the hearing, suspects foul play, saying, quote, I do think Joseph is deceased. I believe he was murdered. Alaska was his home. He planned on being there the rest of his life, end quote. Private investigator Andy Clamser added, quote, some type of criminal offense explains his disappearance. It is less likely an animal predation or an accident or that something happened when he was out hiking, end quote. 
But even if criminal activity was to blame, some are still confused by this circumstance. From the witness stand, Tracy Bowie, who was a co-worker to Joseph, adds, quote, I just can't wrap my head around something happening and that he wouldn't be found, end quote. While reading this and trying to make sense of it, I thought maybe suicide was to blame, that he somehow managed to cover his tracks and walk off into the tundra, but upon further research, this is highly unlikely. His friends, co-workers, and family members all said he was happy, never showed signs of depression, which is not concrete, I understand, I get that depression is a fickle bitch. However, the most damning thing to this theory is that Joseph was actually going to move to Juneau, Alaska in just a couple months. Uh, he was going to marry his fiance, a Megan Ryder, and open up his own law practice. Now, these are not the actions of someone who is suicidal. After this, I became curious of what the responding officer thought when he arrived at Joseph's truck. You know, kind of what his initial thoughts were. And his statements, no joke, freaked me out. Uh, you know, if you've ever watched the show Cops, it really seems like police officers have some sort of sixth sense. You know, they'll look at a seemingly random car and be like, hmm, it, something isn't right. And a few minutes later, uh, surely the car will try to run, be caught, and criminal will come out with drugs or whatever it is. Now, I don't think that they, this is an actual sixth sense. It's more likely just some aspect of their training. It, it teaches them to see things in people and in environments that normal people can't. So with this, what did state trooper Timothy Smith find upon arrival at the scene? Well, just like everyone else, nothing. In his words, quote, I started yelling by megaphone, by the truck and by the river, looking for clues. However, he then goes on to add, quote, we really need to get assets out there quickly. Something wrong raised the hair on my neck, end quote. Now that's creepy stuff, I, for sure. He did not elaborate on what he meant uh, by exactly something wrong. However, in a later interview, Smith did give another statement in which he theorized, quote, I don't speculate. If Joseph is out there, I feel like he is in that area. I think he drove out there. No evidence he came back to town. No evidence of foul play. No evidence he just left town without telling anyone, end quote. I mean, it's kind of just resetting what we already discussed, but it shows that even trained professionals basically say, yeah, we have no idea what the fuck happened to him. All right, let's just go over one more. This one didn't happen directly in Gnome, so I'll just breeze over it. Uh, but it was close by and an equally large mystery, so I thought I'd throw it in here because it has similar themes to the other cases we've discussed. Ellen Gilbert was a lovely woman. They kind of fucking butchered her missing photo. But, I mean, she was cute, intelligent. She loved playing basketball. She was also almost six feet tall, enjoyed athletics. Uh, at the time, she was living with her sister and was looking forward to starting beauty classes. The night of her disappearance, it was clear out and warm for Alaska. Ellen Gilbert was driving with her male friend to a local fair. Now, from what I found online, this seemed to be a date, and if so, it was likely a first date. But as they're driving, the car dies. And from what I read, apparently they weren't actually driving. It seemed like they pulled off of the road to make out, and the battery went dead in the process. You know, props to our guy here, but after this happens, he hops out of the car and, you know, starts walking to try to find help, find someone to jump his car. Here's where it gets strange, though. They weren't too far from civilization, so the guy did not feel the need to actually leave the area and therefore leave his date, Ellen, alone in the car. It kind of sounds like he paced up and down the road waiting for someone to pass by. However, shockingly, during this time, he looks back to his vehicle and Ellen was gone. He never left for more than a minute or two, yet Ellen managed to leave without him noticing. His initial impression was that she ditched him, and so he was upset with the fact that his date walked out, but he, he waited for a car to drive by, eventually got his running again, and so he drove around the area for a little bit trying to find her. After some time, he came to the conclusion that Ellen went on to the fair without him. So he followed and went to the fair as well, and he scoured the place for a woman that would definitely stand out as, you know, being six foot tall. When he realized she wasn't there, he called the police. 
she was just 24 years old and was never seen again. And similar to the last case, no evidence of what happened was ever found. The mail date took authorities to the spot of the incident the same night. They saw the tracks that his car left when he pulled it over. The authorities also saw what they later deduced to be the driver's footprints. Nevertheless, no other clues were ever found. If you want to find a case of someone truly vanishing, this is it. I mean, this bitch got, like, thanos Like, after he snapped his feet, like, she turned to dust and just went away. Like, there's no other explanation. You know, how can this be possible? And, well, many others thought the same. As this case got more recognition than the others I've discussed, with more press, a larger search, and more money being thrown at the finder. I mean, you know, a young woman goes missing, everyone loses their fucking mind. Authorities can't suggest anything. They can't even see... They can't even suggest foul play because that would be pure speculation as there is no evidence for anything. And yes, the driver's story was fully corroborated and confirmed that he was telling the truth and he was cleared of any suspicion. None of these disappearances make any sense and there are 33 of them. In a town with only 4,000 people and nobody is talking about them, I mean, it's hard to even find any discussion online. It's, it's just plagued with reviews and commentary on the movie that inspired my research so forth. But there are a few possibilities that we can discuss here. Now, these are just my ideas because it is hard, again, to find any discussion online. But in the span of five seconds, I quickly came up with three possible solutions or theories more likely. The first theory... Th yeah, it was me. I, I, I fucking did it. I took all of them. I don't even care. All right, the first theory, nothing weird is going on, and these people are just disappearing. Occam's razor, right? You know, in a mystery, the most likely option to be correct is the most basic and straightforward. As in all of these cases can be explained by getting lost in the woods or some similar fate. Now, with that being said, I'm not in love with this theory. Yes, it is the most logical and least far-fetched, but, you know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I just want to create controversy here, but like I went over already, a lot of these people are actually just vanishing under unexplained circumstances. And the fact that no evidence is found, nothing in a place surrounded by a giant open field, I mean... If, if we're trying to be the most realistic here, then this is the answer, but yeah, I, I don't like it. All right, second theory, since we've already been over the lame one, uh, let's talk about something more exciting. I, I, okay, I'm not even going to beat around the bush. There could be a fucking serial killer in Nome. I mean, think about it for a second. You are a killer. Where would you set up shop if you wanted to do your thing for as long as you could? Probably in one of the most remote cities on Earth, right? Hey, Joseph, Ellen... Uh, Flo, Michael, they all just vanished without a trace. All happened at night. It is not ridiculous to think that an experienced and most likely familiar person is responsible here. I mean, psychos are everywhere, and there is history of elevated cases of mental illness in Alaska. The cold weather, isolation, months of continuous night, I mean, it could make anyone's mental fortitude waver. Now, in, for most, this manifests as depression, which you can see by the suicide rates there, which we don't need to get into, but it is not absurd to believe that these factors could also create some sick bastard, too. Now, if you think I'm just talking out of my ass, the, the Gnome residents actually thought the same thing. In the early 2000s, Gnome citizens were so scared and on edge about a killer walking among them, they reached out to the FBI for help. So, an investigation was launched, and surprise, surprise, they found nothing. So, their official report blames all of the disappearances on alcohol. They said that people get liquored up at a bar, lose their way home, and die in the cold. You know what? At first glance, that doesn't seem too far-fetched. But, let's actually think about it. Look at Gnome again. Now, imagine you were born and raised here. How the fuck could you get lost? This place is tiny. I mean, sure, you could go to the wrong house, perhaps, if you were absolutely blasted. But how do you venture so far away from town that your body is never recovered? That dogs can't get your scent and countless hours of aircraft searches can't find your body? I don't buy it. Especially not at the rate that this case supposedly happens in Nome. 
All right, put yourself in this position. Let's say somehow you're drunk as hell and end up in this massive field around Nome. Now, I don't care how much you had to drink. At some point, your body is going to realize it is freezing to death and will pump your veins with adrenaline. This will sober anyone up enough to make at least basic conscious choice. So you're in this field and realize you need to get back to Nome or you will die in the bleak cold. So you look around, somehow you don't see one light from Gnome itself, which is fucking retarded, but what is the next source of light that you could see in this situation? Well, the only thing that would reflect the moonlight and stars with any meaningful brightness would be the ocean. Now, I've been around water quite a lot, and I've never witnessed a night so dark, even in a hurricane, that I didn't see the water reflecting light. So in this situation, you know town, and therefore saving your life, is near the water. So you will go that way, no matter what. When you are dying, your body will almost do things out of your control to prolong itself. Even if you die trying to walk back, your body will be close. Close enough for at least airplanes to identify you. So the FBI report may have merit at the most surface of levels, but if you dig a little deeper, and in my opinion, it doesn't provide an adequate solution. All right, this killer thing though, I, I feel like it's possible. Whoever the killer would be in this hypothetical situation would be getting old now and is would be experienced in what he does. He probably lives in a shack somewhere in the woods and you know what? No, that, that, that sketchy shack we found on Earth. Hold on. Hold on. I'm pulling this up. Okay. Uh, where is it? Uh, oh, yeah. Here we go. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, long ass dirt road. Oh, yeah. Isolated as hell. Shack in the woods. Uh, this, this checks all the boxes. We got them. Ladies and gentlemen, we got them. Okay, I just cut out literally 20 minutes of speculation about this one shack on Google Earth. But, in all seriousness though, I, I don't hate this theory, and, and I am curious to what you guys think. As with all my other videos, it is likely that literally nobody is watching this. And I am talking to myself, and I mean actually like zero people, zero views. But if someone is listening by some miracle, I want your input, you know? Do you think this is viable? I mean, if not, do you have any other theories to provide? I'm genuinely curious and would like some discussion around this because if I'm a gnome, I'm shitting my pants, you know? Like, people are disappearing way too often and the FBI gave me some bunk-ass explanation that if anything, these cases are speeding up. There's even been a person that went uh, missing more recently than Flo, uh, which admittedly I didn't look into because this video is way too long as it is. Realistically here, there is most likely not one cause for the missing people. I'm just spitballing ideas. All right, and the last theory I have, and also kind of wraps back to the movie The Fourth Kind, the final theory, it's fucking straight up aliens. I mean, <laughs> you know, which, which is ridiculous, I know, but it had to be brought up. And you know what? I really wish it was aliens. Like, I, I want to believe in them. I really do. I, I really wish they would just come down and say what's up. You know, I have a weird infatuation with aliens, even though I don't really think they have ever visited. I just think it would be fucking sick for them to come and share cultures. You know, do they speak? Can they hear? If so, they probably have music. What the hell does alien music sound like? It's probably better than the garbage shit we have nowadays. Okay, all right. I know I sound like an absolute child here, but you know I I don't care. It, it'd be it'd be dope. And you know what? Even if green men were responsible for abducting people, I I'd let it slide. And there are billions of us. If they need to experiment on a couple of us here and there, then whatever. I mean, imagine what we would do to a planet if it was rich in resources and the dominant life form there was comparatively as intelligent as a frog. All right, whenever there's a weird event, the alien conspiracy people immediately come out of hiding and start screaming of Martians, even when there's no evidence for it to make sense at all. Uh, but the only real thing about aliens in Gnome that I could find outside of the movie is that a large portion of Gnome residents actually believe in aliens. And this is funny, uh, even before the movie The Fourth Kind came out, Gnome actually had the highest ratio 
of UFO sightings to population size of any town I could find in Alaska, which is admittedly a hilarious coincidence, but it is a coincidence nonetheless. You know, you also have to take into account how isolated they are. It wouldn't surprise me if they believed in fucking forest elves. Besides that though, obviously there's no real evidence of aliens, of course. In conclusion, I don't really know why I put in the effort to make this video. I enjoy mysteries, but there are plenty of YouTubers that do it better than I can. Nevertheless, the bizarre disappearances in Gnome deserve more attention in my opinion. Now, people immediately cough it up to nothing because a fictional movie made a spectacle about the situation, which is honestly kind of unfortunate because the missing person cases in Gnome are now instantly related to a low budget alien flick. Uh, but okay, I need to wrap this up. On the off chance that anyone is still watching, I'd appreciate fucking anything. Just let me know you enjoyed the video. Like, comment, whatever. I'd appreciate it. But, alright. I'll see you in a couple months when I get another random video idea. Love ya.